If you own or are looking at a new Toro Titan and are questioning whether you should buy a bagging system for it, stay tuned because I'll go through my experience using this bagger from top to bottom. As you'll see right now, I do not have the bagging kit on this machine. I took it off because it's getting to be the beginning of summer and I really only like to bag in the spring and in the fall. So easy removal was a big factor in should I get this bagging kit and I'll go through how you completely remove it and what's left over a little bit later. Realistically, my experience with zero turn mowers is with larger commercial units and it was a breath of fresh air to find something a little bit smaller, a little bit more maneuverable and yet just as capable as my John Deere 925. Now that 925 also has a commercial bagging kit on it, much longer. It was, uh, you didn't even have to get off the seat, you just pulled the lever, it would dump the grass and then you could keep going awesome but it was very long and something to remember when you're buying a zero turn and you're going to do the bagging system is that this is going to stick out the back so you're going to have your power unit that's going to have a fan inside that's going to push the grass up into the bags so you're mostly going to use the left hand side of the mower to get close to anything that does mean that most of your turns then have to remain to the left if you take a sharp right turn with something next to you, you will cram that bagger right into whatever you're next to. I've seen it happen a thousand times and unfortunately I've seen it happen on trucks, cars, mailboxes, all kinds of things. Uh, I've always been vigilant of it so I cross my fingers, hope it never happens to me, but it happens. So you have to watch it if you put a bagging system on here. The bagging system here is powered uh, basically by the drive system that drives the mower blades. When you're mowing grass, you have to slow down just a touch while you're bagging if you're in long grass. And it will audibly tell you that uh, by making a sound like you were driving over a bunch of little twigs with the lawnmower. and it comes from the power unit that's on the side. That will tell you that it's pushing as much grass as it can physically push at that point. And if you keep going at the same rate or a little bit faster, especially if it's wet, you will end up plugging up that unit. And the good news with that is that realistically, the power system is what seems to plug up faster than the tube that's going back. So it's not that hard to fix or take all the grass out. You just turn the machine off, lower everything down, stick your hand in and pull stuff out. No big deal. It does bag very well if you slow down and allow all that grass to come up. There's some great blades that come with this machine. With the bagging kit, you do not change blades. You just put a few little pieces on the bottom and it allows it to more direct that grass directly into the power system and it works great from there. We've had a great experience driving this machine even on slopes with the bagger. There is a weight bracket that's in front and if you have uh, full bags of grass in the back, even on slopes you can turn really well and you don't feel like the front end is too light. In fact, uh, with the bagger on, it seems to give you a little bit more traction on this lighter machine with these tires in helps out in turning. You are easily capable of completely filling the two rear bags and more with the system and it will pack grass in there without an issue. Now when you go to empty this system, uh, it's a little bit cumbersome, especially in the beginning. It seems like it needs to wear itself in. The top that you open up wants to close on itself until you get enough grass buildup that it'll kind of give you a friction stop. Once you go to empty the bags, the bags come out great. Uh, if you are emptying in a ditch bank or anything, the bags will collect other seeds, uh, especially if you're in a burry area, they'll all stick to that. The one thing that I had a problem with is when you really fill those bags up and you go to dump them, you're holding on to a small nylon strap and the strap isn't the issue. It's actually the threads that are holding it to the plastic bottom. 
I've ripped them on the left hand side bag multiple times and they keep ripping out a little bit more and a little bit more. Now I can fix that with a few modifications, but that's something that in my bagging experience, even going back to a John Deere 318, uh, wasn't there. I mean, you could take those bags and abuse them and try to dump the grass out. And if you did that with the Toro bags, you would rip the handle off. Few modifications, few thoughts in your own, you know, put a rope in there, tie a knot, use a washer on the other end. I think that will be fine. Um, at this point, they're still working, but it's something that is a weak point and should be noted. Overall, my experience with this bagging system has been very positive. For a 24.5 horsepower Toro engine, uh, it seems like it's got plenty of power to run the powered bagger and get into some deeper grass. I have zero issues with how well it fills the bag. In fact, it could fill them a little bit too well. It will mow wet grass and bag it without a problem as long as you don't go too fast. And generally, the steering and everything that goes along with turning, even on some slight inclines, has been excellent. Uh, the only issue I guess that I could come up with is removing the bags. I think there could be a little bit better way of connecting them and the actual strength of the strap so that you can kind of shake them to empty it. That's the only two downsides that I see. Removing the bagger is very simple and there's multiple, multiple ways you can go at this. I wanted to start with first removing the chute and getting that out of the way. From there, you have the choice to remove the power unit if you wanted to, or move on to the bagger in the back. If you are removing the power unit, you have to just simply slide the belt off its drive wheel, and then you can push a little lever that will release the power unit from the deck and allow it to slide out. Then you can pick it up, take it right off. That removes everything that you need to remove from the side of the deck. The back has a pin that basically holds in the top cover and you're pretty much done. To put it back together, it'd be the same in reverse. And I would assume that I could have this unit back on and ready to bag in about five minutes. That's not really bad at all. I like that. Now, switching over quickly in gears to the mulching kit, that took me probably about 15, 20 minutes to put on, not a big deal, but everything that's included in that mulching kit negates you being able to bag, obviously. So you'll have to remove that mulching kit completely to go back to the bagging kit underneath the deck. Something totally separate. Just as an FYI, this unit does mulch well too, as long as you don't go out and try to cut three inches off the top of your grass. I found that to be true with just about any of the mulching kits, even in the commercial series. You have to cut your grass a little more often when mulching. So overall, if you're looking at this unit, I really think bagging with it is no issue. Uh, in my yard, it just seems to make sense with the amount of leaves that we get off the ditch line and everything else around. And in the spring and the fall, when the grass is really growing, I can kind of let it grow a little bit more and not worry about those rainy days and say, you know, I gotta get out and mow when I don't really want to with the mulching kit. So something that you should definitely look at if you have or are interested in this mower. As always guys, we appreciate your time. If you could give us a like in this video, subscribe to the channel if you haven't already. Check out our full video on this Toro mower review as we compared it to the lower end time cutter. We appreciate your time. Have a great day.